Why do birds chirp when it's still dark outside? Nightingales, owls, whip poor wills, and mockingbirds tend to chirp or call out at night. They do this mainly to establish their territory. Man-made illumination, such as street lights, tend to encourage the night sounds you hear birds making at night. Light from a full moon may also encourage night activity. I grew up in California and I was familiar with the mockingbird who loves to sound off in the wee hours of the morn and wake people up. I am in New Mexico now. I was surprised to hear beautiful songbirds out singing late at night. It was then that I did my little Google search, and discovered that there are many nocturnal birds. Who knew? Birds that roost in flocks at night can be very noisy. The noise both identifies the roosting site and gathers in the birds to a common roost. Roosting together is a form of protection from predators as well and cementing social relations. Some birds do this all year and some birds do this while they are in migration. It is safer to travel long distances in a flock for some birds. This is called the dawn chorus. It tends to happen a bit before sunrise each day, shifting with the time of year. Of course it only happens in the spring and summer when birds are singing. Birdsong has many functions including mate attraction and territorial defense. The dawn chorus is something that humanity has alternately rejoiced and cursed since the first early humans have been woken up by this cacophony, way back in the dawn of time. For some, it was their alarm clock to start the day, for others, it stole the last hour of blissful sleep. Either way, it's something that will always be, as long as there are birds. So, what's going on here? Why do birds start the day in this way? Well, you could say that they are attracting mates and defending their territory. Sure, you could say that, but that's a bit of a cop-out, as in. No kidding, Captain Obvious. Attracting mates and declaring territory are the two main reasons that make up nearly all bird vocalizations. Surely, we must understand bird behavior enough to give a better answer than that, don't we? Well, yes, yes we do. So, let's get a bit more specific, then. But first, a disclaimer. That disclaimer is the number 10,400. That number is the approximate number of bird species in the world. Therefore, any behavior I discuss here has to be taken with the realization that with that many species, nothing is absolute. Birds behave in all different ways, and exceptions are rampant. What I'm about to explain falls squarely into the realm of, generally speaking, to further narrow it down, we're going to confine ourselves strictly to passerines, which very broadly means those birds that have feet adapted to perching on branches. This makes up slightly more than half of all birds. Furthermore, we will only discuss diurnal birds, those whose main activity is during the day, not nocturnals, which are active at night. That said, let's begin. First, it must be realized that bird vocalizations fall into two distinct categories. They are one, bird songs, two, bird calls. You have certainly heard both. They are often heard together, all throughout the day and the night. It can often be tricky, telling the two apart, for some species, more than others. Generally speaking there's that term, again the names of these two types are pretty self-explanatory. Songs and calls. At times, they can be very different, and at other times, especially with certain species, they can sound very similar. Yet, they serve different purposes. There is a further breakdown of vocalizations, so allow me to cover all of that before we continue. Bird songs, for attracting mates males bird calls, for, o oh, announcing, defending territory males o oh, group flock cohesion keeping everyone together, males and females, oh communicating with chicks, males and females, oh communicating with established mate, males and females, oh distress, alarm, during predatory risk, males and females, oh warning, to repel specific intruders, other males, males, you'll notice that morning bird songs are mostly made by males. There are very few exceptions. Bird songs are defined as long, er, loud, complex, and spontaneous. Bird calls are usually defined as shorter, simpler, and less spontaneous. Both songs and calls are heard during the dawn chorus. But in regard to the calls, it is only the first subclass listed above, announcing, defending territory, that is heard. I'll now refer to a specific case study, my own experience with a certain bird that I hear every morning for the past three weeks. 
not really a case study, as I'm not taking notes or anything. But these are my observations. I live in a third floor apartment, with a bedroom window that faces a woodlot that's about 100 feet away. Only about 15 feet away from my window, is a single maple tree, out in the open, about 40 feet tall. Its upper branches, I can nearly reach out and touch. It happens to be springtime, which means that love is in the air. It's time to find a mate. Ah, I mean for the birds. Well, for me too, but that's always been the case. I'm talking about the birds, now. Three weeks ago, I had an American robin decide that the tree right outside my window was the perfect spot to sing his heart out, every pre-dawn. 5.15 am was his preferred time to start his chorus. Pretty much like clockwork, he would be the first one in the neighborhood to start. I'd quite often still be up at that time, and it sort of became my signal that, yikes. It's after 5 o'clock. I need to get to sleep. Since the head of my bed is right at the window, this proved to be unfortunate timing. But, I really didn't mind, as by then I'm really tired, and it's not so bad to fall asleep to birdsong. The 5.15 would gradually creep backwards as sunrise came a minute earlier each day. He's at about 4.40 now. And he's working hard to find the perfect Ms. Robin to shack up with this year. Robins are usually monogamous for an entire breeding season, during which they can produce up to three broods. Robin chicks grow rather quickly, which gives the parents a chance to produce up to 12 of those beautifully colored blue eggs each season. True to form, my robin male arrived in the area before the female, in apprehension of the arrival of the females. The dawn chorus outside my window will be changing soon, as it's about time that nests are to be built and he can get on with being a dad. That nest will not likely be in this same tree, as it's pretty exposed. I'm sure they will move over to the woodlot when they get together and nest. But this tree is the perfect place from which to sing his song of seduction right now. I say all this to point out that the first sounds you hear each morning will likely be songs by males, to attract mates. But, that is only for the first part of the pre-dawn hours. They have more of a job to do, besides attracting a mate. Birds also have to stake their claim to a territory. Before my robin is finished with his dawn chorus, he shifts from songs to calls. These calls are not aimed at females, but rather at other male robins, letting them know that he had drawn a line beyond which they may not pass to set up shop. This far, and no further. He owns that tree, and the nearby section of forest. Everyone else can just move along and find their own area. After he spends some time serenading in my tree, he eventually hops over to the woodlot and begins his territorial calls for the rest of the morning. This is generally how it goes for many of the passerines. Of course, he's not the only one singing every morning. So, although I hear their long complex songs first, eventually it fades into a mixture of songs and calls, as each bird, as each species of bird, phases from love songs to territorial calls at different times. Eventually, by the time the dawn chorus is drawing to a close, the male birds outside have mostly shifted into their more aggressive and not as musical calling phase. As a whole, it's not obvious when you have all the different birds vocalizing. But if you're able to concentrate on individual birds, this pattern is discernible. Especially with certain bird species. The thrushes and the larks, both being very vocal, are excellent examples. And since my robin is a type of thrush, that's a perfect situation for me, 